this is Kian Success. I'm Mr. Big Up Dancing Tear. And they are only cool. Put, 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 put it down. Put it down, put it down. Tell them dancing clear, I put it down. Sweet. They dance from the corner and we put it on Showing at the area and we put it on awesome. Respect, this is Winston Francis along with Unruly Cooley and Don Sinclair on Reggae Vibes My name is Mr. Fix It If you're feeling lonely because you're one and only Boy has found a girl and ran away <laughs> Bless up every time, Reggae Vibes <laughs> Welcome, 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 people, to another Dancing Clear Quick Fire interview. I'll be your host today, Shani T. So go and big up yourself, Dancing Clear, and big up yourself, Unruly Cooley. Now, who we have here in the building today? A real, real, real special guest, one of the original singers from back in the day, Studio One, till now, still working hard. People, YouTubers, let me introduce to you the one and only, the Golden Vocals. And the man they call Mr. Winston Francis. <laughs> blessings, Sarah, man. Blessings. You're good? Blessings, man. Blessings, it, man. Bless. Now, bless. Winnie, we've got this quick fire interview. So I'm just yeah. going to fire these questions over to you. Okay. okay but you first, ready? let me thank you for inviting me down. That's no problem, you man. Know, ab absolutely beautiful. It's always a pleasure, From man. one artist to the next. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, nice. All right, we're going to kick it like this. Okay, right. so Winnie, um, what age did you get into the music and, and what inspired you, brother? Well, um, I, I got in by, by default, actually, yeah. because um, there was a guy who came to Jamaica who was a contortionist, called, and his name was Joseph Clemendor. They called him the Cobra Man. Okay. And he put up an, an offer that anyone could do any one of his acts could um, would, be, would be given a price of 50 pounds. At that time, 50 pounds could buy a house. What, what, what year was this? Brother? This was about 1954, wow. 55. Wow. So, mm. you know... I started. I, I did do what he asked, yeah. you know, and I, I showed him some of some of the acts. And then after he left Jamaica, I started doing tours in Jamaica mm -hmm. as a contortionist. And even today, people still call me Cobra Boy. Uh -huh. But I said to them, "No, Cobra Man." <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so I started actually in show business when I was seven years old. Wow! Yeah, oh, that's, that's deep, brother. And then I started singing when I was about eleven, twelve. Okay. You know, so Alton Ellis, you know, um, and his sister, you know, Artens, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, and, yeah. And, and I were like, we were always competing on stage, wow. you know, because they, they, they had some opportunity hour yeah. where we'd be singing for 10 shillings. Where, where was this? In Jamaica, in Kingston. Where, okay, cool. We can, what's the, what was, the, what was the, um, the venue that used to keep her? Well, uh, all the venues, uh, uh, like in Kingston, all the, all the theatres, like, okay. like Palace Theatre, okay. you know, Kings, you know, uh, Majestic. Oh. Um, Ambassador, yeah. you know, Regal, Carib, wow. you know, all, all the judges used, used to do these shows. Wow. You know, a guy okay. that used to host it called Virgins. Okay. And he was the host of, of these shows. But it as youngsters growing up and you have talent, it, it, it meant, you know, there was a few bob in your pocket. Yeah. You know, because 10 shillings at that time, you know, um, p families, you know, parents were getting like t five shillings a week. For, 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 for working okay so tension is a big big mean yeah, so definitely. this is what we were doing you know we were mm. singing you know against each other you know in a friendly way not yeah. I'm afraid not like today yeah you know we were all friends together okay you know so we just sang you know and then you know uh, but when when things changed because at that time th there was no recordings it was just you know um you're just singing you okay. know vocals yeah. you know mm -hmm. and the audience would sit and clap for the winner, yeah. you know, sometimes they'd stone you with eggs if, <laughs> if, if you lost, you know. But that that, that that was the beef. Yeah, okay. You know, so this this describe your your music. What type of music do you make? Well, I, I do everything. You know, mm -hmm. I I do R and B. I, I I do what one one of the even today. I've got a track called, called um, Extra Careful, okay. which was um which was an R and B track. And mm -hmm. for that track, I thought I could fool the public, so I changed the name from from Winston Francis. To, to Billy Cole, <laughs> and even today, yeah. you know, last Sunday it was played uh, by a, 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 a DJ in in, in uh, Ocho Rios, you know, and he was still asking, "Do you know who this guy is?" Okay. And they're still saying, "Yeah, it's not Billy Cole, it's Winston it Francis," because they, they 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 caught on. Okay, but that was R and B track. Okay. So when you were growing up and everything, and did you did you buy any music? 
Did you buy music? No. And if you did, if you brought a music, what was your first song that you would have that you brought? Sam Cook. Oh. Anything by Sam Cook, you know, okay. Nat King Cole. Yes, yes. You yes. know, um, um, Jimmy Rogers. Okay. You know, all all, all of the um the the, the, the stuff. Yeah. But which, which which was an American American stuff. Okay. Because we did, didn't get a chance. Yeah. At that time, they weren't making records in Jamaica. Okay. There were there there was a guy called Stan Limowat, mm -hmm. who um used to, if you if you went to his studio, you'd make a, a like a dub plate for you for a shilling. Yeah. You know. Oh, okay. So th that was the only records that was being made. Wow. And I I remember when I was going to school, I must have been about eleven, twelve, when I heard the first Jamaican recording in a duke box that was by Larry Lakin called Baba Kill My Goat. And I was fascinated, man. Wow. You know, I just stand there mesmerized to know that this guy's voice is coming out and he's Jamaican, you know, from Jamaica, which he wasn't, he was Cuban. Okay. He was, um, Laura Laker was born in Cuba. Okay. You know, so, but he, he, he came to Jamaica at a okay. young age and Jamaica, he was a fantastic yeah. showman and recording artist. Okay. Wow. So he was the first person that I heard, you know, coming out of a duke box, singing a song from Jamaica. Wow. So what school did you go to then? To talk about school, what school was that? Uh, well, I, I, they say it's one of the greatest schools in in Jamaica yeah. or in the world. Mm -hmm. It was a school, an, a Catholic school called Saint Aloysius Boys School okay. on Duke Street. But where we, in Jamaica? In Kingston. Okay. In Kings on good. Duke Street in Kingston. Okay. Good. But uh, th this this school, even though it was a Catholic school, we had some fantastic teachers. Yeah. And when I was like twelve years old, you know. There was a teacher called Mrs. Sutherland, yeah, who was so well. Everything in Jamaica was so diverse, yeah. You know, so the Chinese, you know, the Indians, the the the, the Africans, you know, everybody was all, all mixed up, and okay. we in, in, inter, intertwined, yeah, yeah. You know, and we grew up together, you know, as as fun-loving kids, yeah. But this teacher, Mrs. Sutherland, she she taught us everything, man, including sex. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So it was like like a university, yeah. and they said. If you go to St. Aloysius Boys School, you can come out to be one of the world's greatest accountant or bank managers okay. or one of the world's greatest criminals. <laughs> okay. you know? And believe me, you know, yeah. we did. Nice. You know, great nice. school, St. Nice. Aloysius. And it was connected to Alpha. Alpha Boys School. Right. So okay. yeah, yeah. you see the musical connection. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, yeah. so yeah. Okay, nice. It was great. Nice. So what's what's uh, do you have a favorite album from from another artist? And if it is so what's what what's your favorite album? From what album well, I should say from another artist. Well, there, there are so many. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I I love Dennis Al Capone. Mm -hmm. You know, I I love um, Little Roy. You know, I I, I love Alton Ellis. You know, because yeah, they're all friends yeah. of mine. Yeah. You know, I love Bob. Yeah. You know, and in in my shows, like I, I I work on the continent, like every every other week. Yeah. You know, I I travel to to, to the continent. Uh, three weeks ago, I was in Switzerland, then Czechoslovakia, wow. then uh, I came back, and and uh, Saturday. And drove to Nottingham all by myself on Sunday to do a show. Wow. Right tomorrow, Saturday, I'll, I'll, I'm going to be in Leipzig in Germany. Right, so, but all my shows mm -hmm. that I do, I usually do dedicate a part of my show to my peers. You okay. know, to all the guys that that are gone behind, yeah, yeah. including Bob Marley. Oh. You know, um, 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 Sadler Head. You know, Delroy Wilson. Yeah, yeah. You know, because yeah, yeah. he was a great friend of mine. <laughs> okay. So I, I, I usually do wow. one or two songs, and dedicate them to these guys because you know they left a great legacy behind. Did you, Did you used to write together with like Delroy Wilson uh, unless you used to write songs together? No, we we didn't actually write. Okay. But but I tell you, it, um, it it was unheard of then. But we used to write. But if you and I, if you came up and you said to me, Winston, I got a, I got a song. You know, and you started writing, and you said, "What do you think?" I said, "Yeah." Instead of put John, put Jack. Jack. Oh, right. You know, yeah, yeah. But it was your song, so we didn't we didn't ask for anything to be on it. Today, that's different. Yeah. You know, if you're inside a studio or you're sitting somewhere and you're writing something, if the other guy farts, he won't pay for it. <laughs> yeah, you true, know? that's true, man. But at that that's time, it it was you know, if, mm -hmm. if you were doing your song, everybody would help yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and nobody would would ask for anything from that recording, mm -hmm. but you. So the funny thing, I heard an interview with Art and Ellis, and he said something along the line, same, same, same way. Yeah, you know we, we I mean? just like, listen, Sean. Everybody. I was just talking to, to one of the engineers upstairs, and uh, 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 um, to, to, to reiterate, the, the 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 guys that we sat with. Yeah. If you if you're in the studio and you came and you had one patty, a Jamaican patty, yeah. And there were ten guys in the studio. You had to break it ten times. Yes, man. Everybody, <laughs> yeah. One cigarette or one spliff, 
You know, if you if you had a joint, man, and you light it, and there's ten guys in the studio, everyone is getting a draw. Okay, yeah. Today, man. completely different. Yeah, yeah. You know? Okay. But we, we lived in unity. I was just telling the engineer also that I've got two songs, yeah? Uh, one is called California Dreaming, mm -hmm. and the other is Two Experience, written by Bob Andy. Yes, 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 I know. Bob Marley did backing vocals on, on the two tracks. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You know? Big winning. Yeah, but but it's it's nothing. Yeah, you know, yeah, you're that, a friend, you're a yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, he, he wanted to go into the studio and he said to me, Cobra, well, well, well come, you know, you 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 ain't, you ain't finished it yet. I said, I'm, I'm waiting on the girls to come down and do the back back and vocals for me. And I said, Go to Gallup, come, we go in, go do it, man. <laughs> Wicked. And we just went in, did yeah. the back and vocals, yeah. and it sounded like two little girls. Okay. You know, great. Wicked. You know, but yeah. that is the way we were. We yeah. were just friends. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. You know, and you know, whatever you're doing. I'll help you, and whatever I'm doing, you will help me. me. Yeah, that is the way we, we, I mean, we a live. Natural vibe, a yeah, natural yeah, vibe. Yeah, 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 yeah. We loved each other, man. So, Winnie, did you, did did you ever work on sound system or anything like this? No, 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 no. Oh, right. Didn't get a chance to. So, what was the local sound system from when you was when you was growing up? Well, there were so many, man. King, um, uh, uh, I was talking about um, mm -hmm. a couple of sound system the other day, and the, one of my favorite sound was a sound called V Rocket, because I used to dance to V Rocket. Right. Jamaica V-Rocket? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I know there's one here Jamaica. from Birmingham. You know, no, 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 this is Jamaica V-Rocket. No, no, but it's you know, <laughs> a next one original man. from back in the day. What, V-Rocket. What, 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 what years was this? What year? Well, the 50s. Okay, 50s. 50s. Wow, yeah. wow. 50s. Wow, that's You cool. know, and I used to, my mum used to trash my ass every time she <laughs> you knew I was going to, to well, you have to steal out and then come back. Mm -hmm. And when you come back, you get a beaten. But it don't matter. Yes, the music's sweet. You have to get licks for music. The music's sweet, man. So, no problem. Okay. Yeah, Tom the Great Sebastian, you know. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah King yeah. Edward the Giant, uh -huh. you know. Waso El Paso, you know, okay, Dennis Alvarez. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wicked. So, Winnie, um, what what kind of artists would you like to work with in future wise or something like that? Well, I'd, I'd work with anybody, yeah. anybody, anybody. Okay. I've, got, I've got a, a band that I've worked with. My, my, my regular band is a Dutch band. From, from from Holland. Okay. Right? And mm -hmm. they hardly speak English. Yeah. But we communicate music wise. And if you l hear the, these guys playing, every group, every every artist that comes onto the continent, as soon as they hear Rudrich and the high notes, they ask they ask him, Can we work with you? Okay, wow. Right? That's, that's good. And, and and you know, they hardly speak English, but they're great musicians, man, and they play reggae wicked. Uh -huh. You know, and those are the guys I work with all the time. Wicked, nice. What what is um i can i put it um what's right because I, I know you've been this a long time you travel enough what, what's one of your best moments in the music do you have do you have do you have one just g give us give us an example of, of one of your greatest times ever in well, this music <laughs> well one of the greatest times ever that i i can remember is when i received the check from ub40 <laughs> for recording mr fix it because when i got the check when I, when I opened the envelope and I saw the check, my hands were shaking like this. <laughs> check. I had to hold my hand. Well enough. You know, I, I can't believe it. You know, I can't believe yeah. that I got a check, you know, for from one of my recordings because the song Mr. Fix It has been recorded by over fifty different people. Okay. Right? Wow. Freddie McGregor, Barry Hammond, John Holt, you wow, name it. Wow, you know, wow. they all recorded it, including UB forty. Mm -hmm. Right? And this was the first time that I've received any kind of money for writing that song or singing that song. Wait, that's and I wrote this song way back in 1968 and never record, never got a penny. Wow. Right? Until UB40 recorded it. And when they recorded it, they, um, their manager, a, a girl called Carol Briney, then, mm -hmm. yeah, asked me if I had, um, if I had a, my, my, a publishing company. And I said, I said, ah, I ain't got a publishing She said, well, you better um, get your public, public publishing company up and running because when I send you the check from you know for the for, 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 for the song yeah by the time it comes through all the different angles you're not gonna get nothing okay so get it so when I got the check and I, I thought 27 pound and she did she talking about you know cut up oh no it's 270 no it's 27 thousand <laughs> <laughs> My heart stopped, man. <laughs> my heart, my, my, believe me, my heart yeah. stopped. I couldn't believe it that I'm getting twenty-seven thousand pounds. You know, for for a song. Wow. And 
when I, I'm, I'm there mesmerized and I'm shaking. Something that you're you know, right long time. My wife just came down the step and she said, what's this? <laughs> <laughs> Give me that there. And I said, ah. Oh. She said, oh, is this a check? Yeah. I said, yeah, 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 and she yeah. said, so we're going to do it. I said, well, I want to buy a, a, a new BMW. Yeah. She said, we're going to pay, pay down on the house with mm -hmm. this stuff. And that's how I got my first wow. house, man. Wow. So if you wasn't if you wasn't doing music, Winnie, what would you what do you reckon? What profession you would have take up? I'd be um, trying to teach kids. Yeah. Because um, I, I I did a stint of that in the eighties. Okay. You know, I, I worked at the Abeng Youth Centre in Brixton, mm -hmm. teaching kids. You know, music. Yeah. You know how to sing. Yeah. You know how to behave. You know how to be. You know respectful to the elders. Mm -hmm. You know because. It wasn't happening then, and still happen, still not happening now. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I think uh, I'd I'd be you know in somewhere trying to pull kids together, you yeah. know, because uh, I, I I I I remember even uh, a few years ago I met some of the guys that I w I taught in Brixton, right? And the first thing they said, Mr. Francis, how are your kids? They must be grown up now. I said, Yeah, my daughter, you know, is married. Mm -hmm. And one of them said, Well, I love her, you know, Mr. Francis. She's nice, you know, she's pretty bad. I says, Well, she got, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know. Really? But I, I felt so good to know that these guys, you know, are telling other people, Mr. Francis was the one who put me on the street in Nara. Okay. You know, right. I'm proud of that. So if I wasn't really into music, that's what I'd be doing. Okay, teaching. Yeah. Okay, that's beautiful. So, Winnie, if you could go back in time, brother, would you do what would you do different? Would you do anything different? And what would you do different if you could go back in time? Well, back in time, what I would do is that I would learn the ins and the outs of the musical mm -hmm. trade mm -hmm. first and foremost, because we don't know nothing about the musical business. Yeah, you know, because the, the, the singing is great, writing is great, but if you don't know about publishing. Yes, yeah. Yes. The business side. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you, if you don't know the business side, it, it's all for nothing. Yeah. Because all you'll be doing, you'll be working for the rest of your life for somebody else mm -hmm. to be making money out of mm -hmm. it. Because I did that. You know, I was working for for everybody and not earning anything. I didn't yeah. know where the royalties were going, where they were coming from. Yeah. No idea. Okay. You know, until my son stepped in. You know, my eldest son. I remember he was walking out one day. He was leaving the house. That was a Sunday, and he was walking through the door and he. He looked back and shook his head, and I said, "What are you shaking your head for?" He says, "Well, Dad, I, I feel so sorry for you, man." I said, "Sorry for, for what?" He said, "Well, Dad, you know, you know, you never get, you know, your true, yeah, you know, well, which out of the yeah, out of the business, yeah, man. you know." And I said, "What are you talking about?" I says, "I sent you all, all of you to school. You've been to good schools. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're, you know, you've never, you've got a roof over your head. You've never been hungry. You know, you always look nice and, and clean. You know, you have more clothes than you need. What do you mean?" And he said, "Dad." You haven't been paid your worth. He said, I, I tell you what. He says, I'm going to take over your business. And suddenly, I'm just laid back because from the time he started taking over my business, the yeah. money just started coming into the bank. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't have to worry again. Okay. So that was a great time. Okay. So, Winnie, if you, if you had the power to make free changes in the music industry, what, what would they be? I would let everyone who is in the music business get paid. <laughs> <laughs> First and foremost, I'd make sure okay. everyone get paid. Okay. And um, if you if you could make other types of music, whatever kind of music would you would you make? Right. Well, now? even this morning, mm -hmm. even this morning, I was listening to um, Borel, you, you know, classical music, and okay. I was listening to to to, to um, Blue Danube by Strauss. Okay. You know, on my phone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I, 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 my music is really diverse. I, I, sometimes I just sit, sit down and listen to soca, yeah. you know, calypso, you know, I listen yeah. to mento, I listen to rap, okay. you know, I listen to jazz, you know, I listen to every type of music, mm -hmm. you know, and from that sometimes I create. Okay. So if, all right, now we're talking hypothetical now. If you could build a band with your favorite musicians. Oh you know, man. You understand? <laughs> who would, who would be in your band? Like backing singers, drummer, BSC, you know, guitarists and whoever, percussion. Who would you have in your band? Right? Well, the, the, um, the, one, one of the first musicians I would have to call for is a guy, you might not know him, is a guy called Ernest Ranglin. Yes, man, I know Ernest. Well, Ernest Ranglin, to yes. me, is one of the greatest guitarists in the world wow. ever. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, because this guy was playing with, with sometimes with two strings and he made, you know, you know, sounds come out of that thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. so he's great. But um, what's that left-hand guitarist, that, that, that Australian guy, Aboriginal guy? 
I'm not sure, you know. Um, he plays left hand guitar. He, he, he passed away quite a few years ago, but you know, I, guys, thought, you, I, I thought you were talking Jimi Hendrix, but you said Jimi Hendrix, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you never know about Australia. Yeah, I never know, black. Yeah, man, he's Australian, man. See? Yeah, I'm original. Yeah, man. Every day. Yeah, yeah. I thought that brother was American, you know. No, man, he's up, okay. he, he's Australian. From, okay. You know, yeah, he's Aboriginal. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Oh, wow, wow. So I'd have, I'd have like, you know, Jimi. <laughs> right, Jimi. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm, okay. on, on the side, and there's so much, so many, you know, great musicians. Yeah. My bass player would be Phil Chin, because I, I, if, every time I get the opportunity to work with him, I do. Yeah, yeah. You know, Phil Chin is a guy who um, actually came to, to England in the early 60s. Yeah. Like, along with Jimmy James and the Vagabonds. Okay, yes, yeah. Yeah, and he is now um, just, I think, six months ago, I saw a thing, a list of great bass players of the world, yeah. you know, in time. Mm -hmm. And he is like number forty-five. Wow. You know, in the world. That's, you know, and, and and it's over a thousand. So to be forty-five, mm -hmm. you know, he's one of the greatest guitar bass players in the world. He used to. He was with um, uh, what's the track called? Doom, 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 um, Rod Stewart. Yeah. And the faces. He, he did. A, if, if you if if you if you're feeling sexy. Okay. Doom, 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 okay. Doom, that bass line. That's real. Okay. Yeah, man. Wicked, wicked yeah. bass player. Okay. So tell me something. You got mad experience. I know that from from studio one days. You've been in the play. I'm not using Black Heroes. You know. Oh yeah, play, yeah, right? which I enjoyed thoroughly. Believe you're in it too, man. <laughs> <laughs> Wicked. I I never forget the day yeah. when when JD yeah said um I'm bringing in a new rap a, a young rapper yeah and you came in man and you just blasted the place <laughs> man. Like, Go on, Charlie T. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really yeah, man. I, I never forget yeah. that, man. <laughs> so tell me, when you, you get ner you get nervous uh, with your, all your experience. You ever get nervous before a show or anything like this? To be honest, Sean, people ask me this question all the time, and I said I eat the butterflies before I go out, man. Oh, uh, you know, so mm -hmm. I, I never get nervous. Mm -hmm. And if 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 you they said being nervous sometimes is a good thing, mm -hmm. but for me, you know, I, I don't. If I was nervous, I couldn't work. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I get I I I'm, I come up at, at times. Yeah. If um if if I have a good friend. Mm -hmm. You know who has passed away. Yeah. You know, or, or a family member. I could not. See, I see guys do it. I couldn't do it. I couldn't go out and sing in a church for a loved one. Okay. But it's a very close friend yeah, yeah. or my family or anything okay. like. I couldn't do it. Okay. I'd I do it at the reception, mm -hmm. but something just locks you, you know your throat. You know when it comes to certain yeah, you know yeah. th things that you have to do, mm -hmm. and that you know I've I've, I've 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 never been able to overcome that. Because I couldn't sing at my mom's funeral. Okay. You know, I couldn't sing at my aunt's. I couldn't sing at my sister's. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's right. w w one of the things. But as oh, yeah. far as butterflies go, I, I never feel really nervous. Okay. For going out. So if uh, if you make a mistake while you're performing, how do you, how do you handle it? Or do you, or is it very rare you make a mistake? Well, I, I rarely make mistakes. But yeah. the, the mistake that, that that an artist makes on stage, yeah. the only person that knows that they made that mistake is him yeah, true. or you. <laughs> true. So why worry about it? That's you know, really, yeah. don't you can't you, you can't stop and say sorry I made a mistake. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm singing I'm 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 yeah. singing. I've got a very popular song mm -hmm. called, called "I Killed the Devil Last Night," and I remember I was doing it in in Hamburg, yeah. right? And I missed the second verse and went to the third verse, and the people out there were singing it, okay. right? So I I, I just says. All change. We're doing the third verse now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you, you you can't you can't let you know a mistake mm -hmm. on stage trouble you because nobody's down there notices it. You're the only one, so don't 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 lose it, cool. Yeah, Just yeah. continue. So, do um, you have any advice for 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 beginners like artists just getting into the music game and everything like this? Well, like I said before, you know, the first thing you want to learn is about the business side of it. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't learn the business side of it, don't get into the game. Because if you go inside, it's a losing battle, true, true. right? You have to know the rudiments of the game, mm -hmm. learn about publishing, mm -hmm. right? Learn how, when you write a song, mm 